Hello engineers, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to detect faces and human bodies using Har Cascade. Before starting with the video, I would like to thank all the viewers since our channel has just passed 100 subscribers. All the feedback and support is greatly appreciated. Also, before starting with this video, I would like to introduce a new section from this video onwards called the quiz. In this section, I am going to ask you, the viewer, a question related to the concept that we are going to discuss. And you are required to answer that in the comments box below. And in the next video, I would acknowledge all the people who got the right answer. So the question for this video is, who are the people who invented the Har Cascade technique that we are going to discuss today? There are two people who invented this technique and you are to name them in the comment box below. If you watch this video carefully, you would get the answer to this question in the video itself. Otherwise, if you read about this concept online, you would get the answer there as well. Okay, so now let's have a look at the demo at how the final algorithm is going to work. On executing, the program is going to take our live camera feed from our laptop camera or the webcam. On that live video feed, we are going to draw bounding boxes on the detections. There are three modes of execution, which are full body detection, upper body detection, and frontal face detection. As their name suggests, we are going to select these modes if we want to detect our full body, detect our upper body, or detect our frontal face. So let's have a look at them one by one. First, we are going to have a look at full body detection. Second, now we are going to have a look at the upper body detection. And now we are going to have a look at the frontal face detection. As you can see, the frontal face and the upper body detection seem to be working pretty well, but the full body detection doesn't seem to work that well. This can be due to the lighting conditions or the clothes that I'm wearing. All right, so now let us start our discussion with Haar Cascades. Haar Cascade is a general object detection technique that is mainly used for facial recognition. Haar Cascades or Viala Jones algorithm do not make use of any deep learning technique. However, they make use of primitive machine learning approaches. Compared to the deep learning approaches, hard cascades do not perform well in terms of accuracy. However, their detection speeds are way too better than the deep learning techniques. Due to this fact, hard cascades are mainly used to detect on a low power machine. In a very rough sense, the hard cascades work as follows. The first step is to come up with a certain set of features that we can use to detect an object in a given image. In the next step, the feature values corresponding to those features are calculated on sub-images of the given image. Sub-images are sub-parts or chunks of the given image. If the feature value is less than some threshold, we say that we have an object in that particular sub-image. And then we return that sub-image as an output corresponding to the input image that we provided. In a very rough sense, this is how a hard cascade works. Now, let us discuss in detail what are the different steps involved. As the first step, we are required to come up with certain features that can detect an object in a given image. 
in this particular technique, the features that we come up with are called HAR features. And these are some example features that are used in this technique. In order to compute the feature values corresponding to these features, we separately calculate the sum of the pixels that lie in the white region and the shaded region. Then we calculate the difference of those two values and return the final feature value. The final feature value is the difference of those two computed quantities. The same computation takes place for all these different features. For illustration purpose, we only have five features over here. However, in the original algorithm, there were approximately 180,000 features. These features are devised from a concept of signal theory called Haar wavelets. In summary, Haar wavelets are composed of square signals. And these square signals are the inspiration behind these features. Now, we have come up with certain features that we can use to detect an object in a given image. Since we have a large number of features and we want to compute these features for n images, this algorithm takes a lot of time to run. Therefore, we have this technique of integral images that we use to reduce the computation time. In order to use this technique for a given image, we pre-compute the sum of pixel values corresponding to the coordinate on that image. For instance, the coordinate D over here represents the sum of the pixel values in this rectangular region. The coordinate location A stores the sum of pixel values in this rectangle. The coordinate C stores the sum of pixel values in this rectangular region. And the coordinate B stores the sum of pixel values in this square. Similarly, by measuring the coordinates from the top left corner of the image, we can pre-compute the sum of the pixels. The HAR features require us to compute the sum of the pixel values in any region of the given image. For instance, in this case, we have to compute the sum of pixel values in this rectangular region A, B, C, D. A brute force approach to this would be simply go on and calculate the sum of pixel values. In order to speed this up, we use this expression. What this expression means, given this region D, we subtract the C part from it and hence we are left with only this rectangle. Then we add B to this remaining region and get this L-shaped region over here. From this L-shaped feature, we subtract the region corresponding to A and finally get this region A, B, C, D. Using this simple technique, we get a massive reduction in the computation times. Now we have a technique that can efficiently calculate the feature value corresponding to a given feature. Now a question arises, out of those 180,000 features, which features are actually useful for our object detection task and which features are more important than other features. In order to get the features which are actually useful for our task, we use a technique called ADA boosting. ADA boosting is a boosting technique that is used to create ensemble of different machine learning models. An ensemble is a council of machine learning models in which each machine learning model gives its individual predictions and using those individual predictions, we get the final prediction output that we require. This council of machine learning models helps us to increase the accuracy and the generalizability. Boosting forms the council of models in such a way that each model complements the failures of the other models. Algorithmically, we train a model, model 1, on training images and evaluate where that model fails. Wherever the model 1 fails, we train a new model, model 2, to compensate for those failures. And again, we train a model 3 that then compensates for the errors of the model 2. In this way, we generate an array of models that complement each other. 
particularly in ADA boosting, we use weights to get the different machine learning models. As a first step, all the training images are assigned an equal weight value. Then we train model 1 on those training images and evaluate the model on them. We then increase the weights of those training points wherever the model 1 fails. Giving more weightage to certain images, the model 2 then learns its classification. Based on model 2's evaluations, the training images weights are then again changed. This chain of models is created until we get a desired accuracy. And then during the final prediction times, this complete collection of models is used to give the final prediction. In order to get the important feature values, we use a modification of the original ADA boosting algorithm. In order to get the best N features, we generate a number of machine learning models that only make use of a single feature. All the models are then evaluated and the feature corresponding to the model that gives the highest accuracy is chosen as the first feature. Wherever the first feature fails, those training points are given more weightage in the next iteration. Then again, we train models based on a single feature and select a feature corresponding to the model that gives the highest accuracy. This feature is chosen as the second feature. Once again, the weights of the training points are increased wherever the feature 2 fails. Similarly, this iteration keeps on going till n steps until we get the best n features. According to the real-time implementation, from those 180,000 features, we get approximately 6,000 features that are important. This reduction helps in, again, reducing the computation time. Finally, the third component in this technique is the attentional cascade. Why we make use of this cascade in the final prediction step? For any given sub-image, there are only a few features that can completely decide whether an object is present in that sub-image or not. Hence, for a given sub-image, we can only use a small number of features to accept or reject that given sub-image. And this is exactly what the cascade classifier does. Given the sub-images of an input image, we pass it through a number of different models. These T models are composed of different number of features. Towards the start, a smaller number of feature values are used. As we go deeper into the cascade, the complexity as well as the number of features keep on increasing. These set of sub-images are first passed through model 1. If model 1 predicts that an object is present in that sub-image, that sub-image is passed to model 2. However, if model 1 rejects the presence of an object, that sub-image is discarded completely. Similar steps are followed for model 2. If model 2 predicts that an object is present in that sub-image, that image is passed to model 3. However, if model 2 predicts that there is no object present in that sub-image, that sub-image is completely discarded. Finally, if the last model predicts the presence of an object in a sub-image, that sub-image is finally returned as an output. This cascade technique not only helps in reducing the number of computations that we do, it also increases the accuracy of the overall model. Finally, from that sub-image, we can get the coordinates of the bounding box in the given original image. Alright, so this is the complete technical discussion related to Haar Cascades. Now, let us have a brief look at how the code looks. All the code that we are going to discuss is present in the GitHub repo that is linked in the description box below. Alright, so our main code is divided into three files which are main.py, camera.py and detector.py. Main.py is the final executable file that we can run. 
it collects all the contents from the camera and detector combines them and runs the final software the detector.py file contains the code to detect an object of interest it detects the required object and returns the final coordinates of the bounding box camera.py contains the camera thread that captures images from the camera and presents them to the detector to detect the bounding boxes in the images the complete code works in two main threads that means we have two executions occurring side by side the first one is of the camera and the second one is of the main program the camera thread keeps on running continuously for some specified time interval for instance in our case the time interval is specified as 80 milliseconds after each 80 milliseconds this camera thread captures an image from the camera and presents that to the detector why we have this multi threaded architecture in place of having a single loop where we get the image and detect an object in it the reason for this is in general the detector algorithm can have a particular execution speed that is slower than the camera thread or that is faster than the camera thread in both of these cases this multi threaded architecture helps decouple the camera and the detector so that both of them can run at their own pace this discourages any kind of lag that we may experience for our particular scenario in the har cascade detector the detector is itself a fast algorithm therefore we don't have much advantage however in other complex algorithms this architecture can have a huge benefit to implement this we have implemented a camera thread class which is a sub class of the thread class inside the camera thread we have a run function which contains a while loop that runs the complete camera thread and in the main.py file we have a while true loop that keeps on running indefinitely to get the detections this is the main thread of the program all right so this is all the code for the har cascade program and also what i had to discuss in this video so if you like the video press the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos and thank you for watching bye